Hi, Jamie Davis, the pod medic here from the Public Health Preparedness Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. We brought in by NACHO, the National Association of County and City Health Officials. And we're here looking at some of the interesting things seen in the exhibit hall. The exhibit hall opens today, Rick, and uh, Rick Rosati from the Mitigation Journal here. Uh, Rick, what are some of your thoughts? We were talking to some of the exhibitors uh, just a few minutes ago about what they're expecting and what they do here at the conference. Yeah, the diverse group of uh, exhibitors that are here really does speak to the quality of preparedness activities that are out there for everyone to take part in. Um, behind us are a couple of vendors that specialize in planning and preparedness and training. There's, so there's really no excuse to skimp on those types of activities when such a wide variety is out there. And then some of the hardware that we've seen here so far, everything from tents down to uh, miniature technology for use in the field during an emergency or crisis are all available here at the NACO Public Health Emergency Preparedness Summit. And, and really, uh, you know, I was talking to the Mark over in EnviroSafe over there and he was saying that uh, they do a lot of different things that have really fulfilled that preparedness aspect including active shooter um, scenarios in college campuses and things like that which has become an increasing concern in many places. And active shooter situations are certainly on everybody's mind in, in today's current environment um, I and mean, we have to keep in mind that the type of planning that goes into uh, getting ready for a, a tragic event like an active shooter situation is the same kind of planning that goes into planning for a routine event such as a fire or a storm or some other such thing. And right behind us, the integrated solutions uh, booth is talking all about planning and preparing through technology and on-site delivery. Now, Rick, I talked to Andy Rozak from NACHO, and he was saying that the, there's a, a huge international presence here today. Yeah, and that's the great thing. You know, when we talk about emergency preparedness, especially in healthcare emergency preparedness, there are so many universals that translate beyond national boundaries. Now, Andy was saying that every state in the United States is represented, as well as Canada, the United Kingdom, China, Vietnam, South Korea, and the U.S. Virgin Islands are also here. So it truly is an international flavor uh, to this healthcare community. And that's because preparedness is really a universal concept, isn't it? I mean, no matter whether you're trying to prepare for the aftermath of a tsunami or preparing for the aftermath for, of a hurricane, uh, this, the problems and the public health challenges that present themselves are very similar. It, that's right. Now, we all fortunately don't have to worry about tsunamis. We all don't have to worry about earthquakes or hurricanes or the like, but we all have to worry about the af aftermath of the disasters that do come our way. And in that setting is public health, and in that setting is maintaining what the community needs, and that is health care support support after the crisis. So we're looking forward to kicking off our podcast studio today. We're going to be interviewing a huge assortment of highly knowledgeable uh, specialists in the field of preparedness and public health, and I'm really looking forward to having my discussions. I know you are as well, Rick. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to talking about points of distribution and what pod sites of the future are going to look like. I'm also looking forward very much so to talking about the nurse triage line project today. That's going to be interesting for me as well, and I'm going to probably dump that into the nursing show feed at some point once you get that finished up, because I think that the information here transcends even uh, your your boundaries of your different career paths in healthcare. Because in a disaster situation, in a public health situation, all healthcare professionals are going to be asked to step up and fulfill multiple roles. That's right, and that's, that speaks to diminishing or knocking down the silos between traditional responders of police, fire, EMS, and the non-traditional responders of public health, healthcare public works, that sort of thing. As a retired battalion chief from the fire department and a paramedic and now a nurse, I really have an understanding of, of how those silos need to come down and how to communicate between specialties like yourself in, in emergency medical service and nursing to what we're dealing with here in public health. So stay tuned here on the MedicCast channels at MedicCast.tv and, of course, over at ProMedNetwork.com for all of the conference coverage that will be coming out on our various shows from the ProMed Network here at the Public Health Preparedness Summit. I'm Jamie Davis, the pod medic from the MedicCast and the nursing show. And I'm Rick Rosati from Mitigation Journal, the All Hazards podcast. So we'll sign off and stay tuned for more of these short segments we'll be recording periodically here in the exhibit hall as we talk to some of the exhibitors and attendees at this conference.